Alrighty, here we go. Round two. Hello and good luck to Mr. Moenti. Uh, we gotta keep. Right? Mm, yes. We lost the die roll, so we're not on the play. Which I feel like I really need. Since I am so not awesome in playing aggro decks. But, whatever. We'll start here. We'll get the, what, the Rambler out first? Maybe the Bronze Sable, depending on what we see across. If this guy's gonna die. Rambler's just a touch better. Uh, but really all we have right now is Rambler with uh, an Assault and a Fall of the Hammer, and then we'll try to land, hopefully, some sort of mountain to get the bolt out. Ooh, that's cool. I'll get the Rambler out. Whatever. It's only a touch better than the Bronze Sable. I don't have any ordeals to really care about it, so that's fine. And if we do draw an ordeal, that'll be nice. Let's see what's on the opposite side of the table. Ooh. That's pretty fun. Do I want to get greedy and wait? Here's the thing. Yeah, I'm going to wait for this fall of the hammer. I could try to just bash in right now, but I think just getting out my skull cleaver will be good. I think I do just offer the trade here. Because I don't think my opponent's going to do that. Maybe my opponent does. I don't know. Yeah. Because I got a feeling something's going to get bestowed or something bigger is going to happen. So I want to where the life gain is going to actually be better. So I'm glad I did that attack. I didn't think my opponent was going to rock it that way. Now my opponent is a little bit lighter. There could now be like a divine verdict or something. I'll go ahead and attack in again. Especially now that I have some tricks available to me. Could have done a bolt right away, but I got a feeling we might be able to get some more value from my opponent here. I'm still okay with just the Saturn Rambler eating the Hopeful Eidolon. God's willing. Alright, so now we are going to go ahead and fall the hammer. Target creature control deals damage equal to its power to another target creature. Same amount of damage. We get our value and more damage through, thanks to Trample. So that did matter. That's cool. Ooh, I should have left Cornet Assault up. That was bad tapping of manas. Don't think it matters on this board state, but that was bad. Note to self. Okay, so this is nice. I think I'm going to go ahead and just play two of my two drops instead of the ill-tempered Cyclops. Pretty sure. Tap X target creatures, scry one. Okay. Opponent gets to scry. Kind of waste a card just for like a time lock, which against my deck is actually quite good. So we're going to keep these out. Um, I like diversifying my threats to keep pounding through damage, and having Cornet Assault on multiple creatures is always kind of fun. What was that? Exile target tap creature. Okay, so Skull Cleaver's gone. Not a huge deal there. We still get a Passion for six. And then... I'm only going to show the ill cycle. I don't need to show the rare that I have. Even though it's not a big deal. Maybe it's better because it is lethal, but I don't think there's something to get through all of these guys. So There we go. I like that my opponent is playing three colors. That means it's a pretty dorky hand, though there were some God's Willing ex Excoriate action that I need to pay attention to. Yeah, if I wasn't sideboarding last game, I don't really have a strong sideboard plan. I don't know what I would do to sideboard. Right now, it's really just be aggressive. And I think that's going to have to be the the game plan here as well. Just trust that my deck's going to be a little bit more fast than other opponents' decks. And definitely with a three-color deck that I saw, that could be the case. 
but who knows? <laughs> I don't know the format, and I don't play aggro, so I'm out of my comfort zone. But that's why it's so much fun right now. Okay. Very weak hand here. We're going to mulligan this. We're going to be on the um, draw. So, and again, like we saw before, the deck should mulligan pretty handily. This is much better. Be infinitely better on the play, but that's okay. I'm just going to attempt to get there. I will go ahead and do the Rambler first here. And I have to come back to that decision that I faced last game about, did I play the Skull Cleaver first? Or the Ordeal? Well, I guess it's Skull Cleaver. Since Ordeal's not going to do a whole lot at the moment. Off for of the trade. Opponent takes the damage. Cool beans. As should happen, because... These these guys just thwart it later, but their deal on the Minotaur Skull Cleaver should be pretty good this next turn. Though presumably my opponent will play, of course, some other creature or, or something to where that's not going to be a good attack. Because it'll be a two for one. The ordeal will make the three three. Oh, or not. Let's see, is there a two drop in my opponent's future? If not, I could be in good shape here to be able to attack him with the Minotaur Skull Cleaver and an ordeal on top of it. I'm definitely going for it, even though there could be a bounce or something. This deck is all about going for it, and if opponent can deal with it, opponent can deal with it. So let's see what kind of trick or ruse may or may not happen. None, that's good. Continue to advance the board. Scoriate? Yep, there it goes. Alrighty. Coastline Chimera? Hmm? We'll start trying to go there. Into the air. 13 turn clock, my friend. 13 turn clock. The deck, I, I do have a deck that has reach, in which I can eventually get uh, out of something like this. Ooh, here's all the asps. Of course, hardest thing for my deck to deal with. I'll just continue to play out some threats. So in the event my opponent wants to try to bash in. One more land and then the asp gets really scary. If my opponent attacks with the Asp, do I just do a bunch of blocks? What's the most my opponent can pump? Plus two, plus two maybe? Unless they use multiple cards? Hmm. Probably just take the damage. The thing is, I could try to take the opportunity to kill the Asp. Ooh, this life gain is going to be kind of sweet. Um, I think I'm going to take the opportunity to try to kill it right now. I don't think I can beat a lifelinked asp next turn. One, two, three. Yeah, let's just go for it. Could easily get blown out by a trick here. But like I said, we're going for it. It's going to be a three for one. It could have been right not to put one of the uh, two ones in front of it. I mean, there are these combat tricks, especially in white, that I don't know if there's like the plus one, plus ones or whatever. There's definitely a green one that does that. Uh, it's God's willing. So protection from red should get it pretty okay. I think I had to. I think I'm losing the game anyway if this asp is able to uh, get monstrosity and lifelink to next turn, so such as the lives. Hmm. 
I think the scry is most relevant right now. So I'll just kill the, the Triton. See what I scry into. Hmm, that's good. Not great. See myself just being way too far behind to do anything relevant. Because that ass was going to get monstrosity pretty handily. And it'll be out of burn range. It's going to get all its life. Yeah, it's a combo. I need to win before uh, turn. I need to basically be so far ahead on turn 5 that an ass can't just like shut my entire deck down. Which it does. That's okay. I should have played my island. Because if I draw a land this next turn, I really want to... Oh no, never mind. I'm already at where I need to be. I assume monstrosity happens? No? Okay. Pretty much just going through the motions here, because I don't think there's anything in my deck that can get out of this asp danger zone. And my opponent can be monstrosity if, if my opponent so chooses. It just gives more life. I think I would have monstrosity the ass, but that's fine. Tapping, yes. Sete Rembleu. Well, sure. Play it out. Just staying alive. Just staying alive. Assume the Warden taps down the Rambler, bashing it with both. Monstrosity puts me down to one. My little dudes do not take care of this ass very well. Oh, I'll double block. You best believe, my friend. You best believe I'm double blocking that. Trade my disciple for a rambler? Heck yeah. Still to your tune clock at this rate. Show me some more cards. Come on. Come on. So my opponent really is just playing three colors? Is that what this is? Are you splashing for a Nyxborn Triton? What other cards do we see in the first first game? Dauntless Onslaught. Boom! Good. That's exactly I mean, not good, but what I wanted to see is like, yeah, show me another card see what happens. You're tapped down. Will concede for viewing pleasure, even though I do believe in playing things out. I'm trying to think what other random cards we saw. So Eidolon, we dealt with earlier. Uh, I'm still keeping this the way uh, I built it. I'm not too sure how else I would build the deck. Again, just have to be fast. Arguments to bring in things like Stymied Hopes and Thassar Buff to deal with the Asp because they are answers, but I don't think I want to take out these other cards. Maybe I do. Maybe Coastline Commander, I mean, it's just such a bad card in what I'm doing because of any late game. Yeah, I think I do actually want like a Stymied Hopes. Yeah. 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 I like it. Boom. I'll do that instead. 
Could be wrong. We'll find out. Probably won't even come up, but something to think about. So I kind of want to mull aggressively here. Now that we're on the play, make sure we have an early two drop plus an ordeal. But it's not like I'm guaranteed to win out of that. I mean, my opponent does have removal spells. Yeah, I want to play first. Please, please, please. Uh, all right, so decision time. I mean, this is a perfectly keepable hand with a Vapor Cannon to Wave Crest Strain and a Portent to Betrayal. Nah, I'm not going to mull. But man, it would be greater if one of these mountains was an ordeal. Who knows? Maybe we'll draw it. But Portent does kind of help, and Wave Crest Strain is also one of the things that deals with um, super big dudes. So it's nice being able to uh, have that. This paper can probably do six points of damage for a while. Ooh, or spells you cost cast one less to cast, and then of course heroic. That's a good card. Mayhaps fall of the hammer will take care of it right now. Yeah, because if this gets targeted, then the Fall of the Hammer won't take care of it, so... We'll just kill it now. Play land, bash in for two. I don't want my opponent to be able to play uh, Auras and bestow it nice and early. Commune with the gods? Yes. Wow. Metamai, that's interesting. So, I need to try to know what these things do. Colt's reward is good. Hopefully, I know. This guy, I know. Hunter's prowess, God. I mean, Metamai is, of course, super powerful, but six mana? My opponent doesn't know my hand, but my opponent has to be kind of scared of me just winning before that happens. I'm glad that the reward and the prowess can't be picked. Those are actually pretty powerful spells. But I think you just have to take the Metamai, because what, you take the Eidolon? I guess the Eidolon's actually really good, too, because it just it will be coming down as it bestowed something on something. But that's a rare. That's a rare. That's a mythic rare. Powerful cards. Friendo. Okay, opponent's back. Play to land. What? Win in the graveyard. Eidolon Hunter. Nope, took Metamai. Alrighty. So maybe my portent of betrayal will get me there. Right now I'm just bashing for two in the air, and that's not particularly exciting. I need some more gas. I got all the lands I need. Maybe this was a 15 land deck. I don't know, I never even consider that. I just always assume 16 is the most, but since I don't play the aggressive curve that often, maybe that's something I should have done. There's Warden, sure. Ugh, that's horrible. Still gonna bash on in. Yeah, damage. Alright. I don't like where I'm at. I have no pressure. I need to draw one of my few power spells, like an Ember Swallower or something. And then, uh... I mean, Portent of Betrayal can get good with Metamai, but I'm still so far away from a uh, a kill that way. But I'm almost guaranteed that as soon as Metamai comes down, Portent of Betrayal is just going to snatch Metamai away, do some damage, see if I can draw another card or something. Because, yeah, why wouldn't I? I assume the Warden's going to just start tapping down the Vaporkin. 
Staying alive. Hmm, that's a decent card. Yep. And then I'll just hang on to the wave crash, trying to make my opponent pay three to do me three damage. Don't need the one point to bounce through. So if Minimite comes down now, which Minimite does, we get to bash in. What's are we drawing here? Rise to the challenge. So we bash in. This is going to be 8.8, 9, 10, 11, 12, plus I need five more points of damage. I should be able to get there with these guys. So let's get there and win the game. What could I draw? This doesn't matter because I'm going to untap, right? Yes, yes I am. The scry is kind of key right now. <laughs> because we'll be able to plan this all the way out once we see what the card is. So Minimize is definitely doing four, and we're going to get the extra turn. So unfortunately, this guy is going on the bottom for Shizzle. And I have to decide who I'm attacking with and how these blocks are happening. Oh, can't attack during extra turns. Well, uh-oh. This could get very bad. Definitely attacking with four. I assume Vapor King gets tapped down. That's correct. So if we attack with everybody, the agent could unblock the Kragman Butcher, which is okay, except I really need more damage to get through, right? So four, five, puts the opponent nine. I'll get to untap. With the agent gone, this is assuming the agent blocks and I've used the rise of challenge. I'll do four, five, six, seven. I need two more points of damage. All right. I attack wave crash triton. I tap right now. Wave crash triton tap the agent horizons. It deals one, two, three, four, five, fourteen. All right, wait, hold on. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's four left. I get to untap. Yeah, that's how it has to be. We go there. Target here. Untap here. Should get it. Should get it there. So we're going to take our extra turn. Oh, but Metamai is going to be back to block. <laughs> I don't get it for two turns. But it can't attack and it's tapped. Aha. Uh -huh. Very nice. We got there. Very cool. Woo! That was scary. That was pretty crazy. Well, somehow I feel like I'm lucking out and winning these games. I don't feel very confident in my gameplay. But man, this is a fun, fun tournament. I'm so glad we're in the finals. I want to play one more time with this deck. See you then.